Well, a bloody great big box arrived today with all the panels for the uh, Vogue SE. we will unpack that in a second. Polo's gone past his MOT, as did my truck. <laughs> Suddenly thought last night, oh, I wonder when the truck MOT is due. Oh, yes, today. Um, so next, uh, the customers provided new calipers and new um, uh, discs for the front pads of the lot. So I'm just going to go over and overhaul that lot. No real great drama here. Just kind of take it all apart and rebuild it. Uh, the old caliper was leaking, so that's the original caliper. It's leaking somewhere. And then I thought, well, let's have a laugh taking these uh, old discs off. So. More often than not, are we actually looking at anything meaningful? I don't know if you are or not. You're too far away. There we are, you are. Um, so all I'd normally do is put the disc in there, put my ratchet on it, and undo them. Bearing in mind they're only supposed to be done to about 65 foot-pounds. Uh, and these ones, uh, that was done. Here's one that hasn't been done. Right, yeah. Fucking hell! Right, don't do your disc box up this time, folks. Probably a thread lock, um, I'm assuming, or an arrow die. Well, that is uh, ridiculous. I've never found on that type before. Fuck! Right. Thank you, Mr. Four Foot Breaker Barn. Most useful. Yeah, I honestly can't see the point doing them up like that. Now, I will replace the seal. Oh, 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 oh. Um, but probably not the bearings. Um, 14 mil. Let's go and get a 9 sixteenths. I don't want to use that, you see, on my impact gun. Although I suppose I could. They're all, they're all loose now, aren't they? See where the old wheel was quite useful for um, supporting the disc and the hub as you're taking it out. So there we are. Get him out of the thread lock on there. Look at it all. Yeah, don't do that, folks. Fucking pointless. Just make someone else's life miserable. <sighs> right, next. I need to get the disc off. So, I'll probably, you know, still, Mr. Smallhammer will try. However, at this point, the disc is sacrificial. So what we do is, rather than belting the hub on here, we turn it over. And, belt the disc. Just thinking about it. It's not my biggest. Happy, but it's not far off here. Ah, nice, no pain. Great, I need to clean this out next because uh, it's now full of grit from the wheel bearing. Put the new disc on um, and uh, yeah, put the hub back together again, I reckon. Well, there we go, front axle is off. Uh, main reason the front axle is off because I need to replace the bushes. Uh, apparently there was quite a lot of play in the bushes. Now, all of the bolts came apart relatively easily, um, but they'd all been copper eased up fairly recently as well. So I think these bushes are actually not that old. However, seriously deteriorated. Um, yeah, uh, so basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to bung in a um, poly bush, blue poly bush replacement, um, and then Really, all the customer wants this thing to happen with this thing is new discs. Check the bearings, put new discs on, put new calipers on. Um, so I've mounted it on the stands and the paint in there, so I can finish that once I've uh, been pressing these bushes out. Um, yeah, it's not the end of the world, is it? Um, 
so pressing the bushes out, it's I'm not it's not something I'm gonna video. You just use a 20 ton press and it's scary shit. Um they do tend to release with a bang. And then clean everything up and lob it back together again. Pressing these bushes out, I didn't have a socket that was big enough to go around the outside, and that's a silly way to do it anyway <coughs> for me. Um, because, um, well, partly because um, the first one I did was the pan hard rod, which never really puts up that much of a fight, but there it is. Um, and uh, the first time it went bang, fucking needle dropped off, <laughs> off me gauge. I had to get another gauge. Uh, that probably explains why it was sitting, resting at the uh, at the four ton mark because the needle had shifted. Uh, so that's faulty. Anyway, I'm getting on the gauge. It's not a huge issue. So I really didn't want it to be um, going anywhere near 20 tons. And it's taken like 15, 16 tons to shift these out in the past with the metal ring on the outside. So this time I opted to push the rubber inner section out, just using a toughened socket. And they come out like that. And then once the rubber inner section's out, then using my reciprocating saw to put nicks on the edge of the metal. And then use Mr. Thumpy, five pound, three pound hammer, it's over there, and a, and a, and a, a chisel, brick chisel, and knock the edge out, and they come out like that. It's a bit of work, it's a bit noisy, but it's far safer than using a press and not really fully understanding um, how much tonnage you're putting into that press. Uh, so that was that. Okay, so I've just got one more to go. Um, the reciprocating saw ran out of um, ran out of battery, so that's charging up. And then I thought, well, I'm going to do these hubs. So I put the new disc on to the near side, onto the left hand side, shiny. Uh, and I'll fit the new caliper on, make new brake lines and everything up. And then I thought, right, okay, let's do the driver's side. Uh, someone's put the ceiling back to front. Why would you do that? I am pretty sure that on the other side of this seal it will actually say stub axle side. It's not even tight, but I'm pretty sure that these, because these are like the Cortico OE type seals. Oh, 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 oh. Let me just um, position you there. Get that off there. Oh, come on, thinking. Behave. Bastard thing. I have always put them on the other way around, so this lip, this double lip, actually goes onto the stub axle. I've not looked at the stub axle we get on this side just to check whether it's in, even serviceable. Now, there's nothing written on this. Um, the new ones that I put on the Cortico ones have got stub axle side written on the outside. Quite why you put them on back to front, I don't know. But anyway, it won't come on back to front when I put it back together again. Right, now that's done that. Uh, let's have the bearing out. We'll take that out, pop that in the box. Protect it. Then I'm gonna stuff a load of rag into the end here. Um, clean out the old grease. This stuff stinks, by the way, it's like proper. It's like it's got a mixture of EP in there as well. Probably from the axle. It smells like old fanny, uh, for want of a better word. Want to a better description, old chap. Um, right, um, you don't really need to watch me. You're probably not even watching me anyway, are they? Right, I'm going to get this disc off. Well, as if I need to prove um, that I don't make this shit up, there we are, this way to stub axle. Fit to depth of four millimetres. There we are. Nice Cortico twin lipped original spec seal. Um, and. <laughs> This time, folks, I'm going to use my proper kind of seal insertion tool and a mallet rather than a, uh, whatever I was using last time. You guys moaned like hell about them. Yes. It's a sunny day. It's a bank holiday. Yeah. So I am working on the seal on the, uh, the Vogue SE. Yep, it's all cut off. I tend to... You guys are going to moan like hello. I tend to keep hold of the OE rubbers. Um, largely because that's probably original to the vehicle. And the replacement parts I find last minutes. It might not be original to the vehicle. 
Might be. Might not be. Don't know. Anyway, um, because they tend to last better than the reproductions, um, they're more often than not they're worth refitting, unless they're absolutely you know shagged out. So here's some over here. That's a shagged out original kind of rubber bush. That's that's just dye. That's that's going nowhere. But these, I think these have got a fair bit more life left in them. Um, yeah, right. Okay. So next, Phil's. Uh, these are standard DDS jobbies. And really, uh, they, they come quite nice actually. They come with the closing piece, they come with the reinforcing piece, and they come with the the trim piece that the uh, door rubber attaches to. Holes there for the outer sill, for the plastic cover. Nicely spot welded. Yeah, quite pleased with those. I'm going to see if I can get them in now. So I just need to have a little bit of a clear up and then work out how on earth I'm going to get this thing in. Um, because, just because, I might need to um, position the inner sill onto the mounting points and then slide the it outer sill over the top, going up and then around. Let me let me do it without videoing, without getting distracted, and then I can uh, I can crack on with it. These two bits can go in the scrap. I salvaged these two before I realised I was going to just cut off the sill um, and now I've just cut off the sill we can do that properly can't we right so like I say a little bit of a clear up and uh, yeah, we'll see what we can do oh my goodness this is all the uh, ABS module down here I need to move that really before I go to berserk front damper um, yeah, and obviously I'll cut all this lot out. And the, once the sill's in place and fixed onto the bottom of the A and B post, then I can cut out the bulkhead mounting. Um, but like I say, let me crack on with getting that roughly into place, and then I'll see. Oh, I'll come back to you and let you know how I did it. But rather than me recording hours of me swearing at this thing, I figured that I'll uh, do it and then tell you how I did it. And if you want to see how I did it, then I'll show you when I do the other side because the other side of this car needs to be done. Axle's still out. Oh, that's fallen out. <clears throat> nice day today. Very nice day. Quiet. Okay, so there's no body mounts in there yet, um, but um, that sort of fit. Um, I've Basically, I've bolted through the original kind of very early seat box bolt holes. Um, so I've bolted the inner sill up and then I've clamped it underneath using a couple of my big weld clamps. Uh, but it does go in. Um, I got hung up a little bit here. Uh, so I just need to probably percuss the bottom of the A-post out a tiny piece. But other than that, um, I had to move the B-post out. Um, in order, you can see there's a fair amount of flex in there still. Um, I wasn't really kind of leaning on it. Um, got the sill in behind the A post first of all, and then worked on getting it behind uh, the B post, B C post, B B C post. Um, right, I think I'm going to put some welds on this thing now. Weld the inner and the outer sill together because there doesn't seem an awful lot of point in keeping it separate, really, does there? And then as far as the a post is concerned um, I'm going to get away with most of this to be quite honest uh, largely because once it's lifted up and into place it's sort of this piece all sort of fits some localized repairs um, it needs some repairs to the inside so I need to fix that before the sill goes on or before I weld it to the sill let's say uh, but that looks like just flat steel down there um, I'll be able to get that sorted out but no, that's 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 quite encouraging. That. Um, right, let's see if we can get it out while you're watching. Um, so, literally, just um, no body mounts on at the moment. So, lift that over the chassis. Lift this over the chassis. Drop this down. I mean, it is a kerfuffle, but I'm going to have far more fun welding this thing 
off the car to my bonnet. I am inclined to actually cut the bottom of the A-post off because it will make life so much fucking easier. Because there's amount of flex in here and there's no flex at all for this A-post. Um, but I think once it's on, well, that's that end off. And then So that's how I got it in. Um, but I'm going to weld it. Okay, so that's it kind of roughly in place. Um, I'm just going to have a go at getting this B post lined up next. Um, so I've bent these kind of half moon tabs inwards because I think they're going to weld onto the inside of these pieces here. The only slight concern I've got is that the angle there, you can see there's a difference between that and that. Now, I can't see the sill is anything other than absolutely perfectly placed. I've measured it from the chassis to the bottom edge of the sill, front to back, so I just think there's an anomaly that I might have to drill these spot welds or, there we go, seal will fit. Cut that out. Um, yeah, I mean, basically, as soon as I bolted it up, it kind of, it presented itself up to the floor area here. So I think the next thing I'm really going to do here is I'm going to stick some self-tappers in and plug weld each of these holes along here, around, along there, get it all welded back to the gearbox tunnel, weld the B-post on once I'm sure of the measurement. Really, I want the door for that. Um, so we'll see. Um, but I'm quite pleased with that, actually. That's been quite good effort. I mean, it's quite a lot of effort, but that's been quite good effort getting that sill in place. Yes, the only slight issue I had here was that this box here that the seatbelt attaches to was welded onto the top of the sill. Okay, um, I've had to make a little recess in the top of the sill down there so that I can get it back on and then I'll re-weld it back on. So obviously it's just a case then of the, you know, the seatbelt mounting and the B-post being very, very, very tightly attached onto the sill. Um, I've done nothing with it at the top end here. It's just a case now of measuring the gap from there to there really because there's no reliable way I can measure it to the back here so I'll have to measure from one bolt to one bolt on this side and if it's if it's the same as it is on the other side we know that the, the B post is in the right position I could measure from there to there but <laughs> there's nothing changed in the thickness of this item um, and yes I did chop the bottom of the A post off it did make life significantly easier and as you can see it's probably quite a wise move as well uh, i gave it a tap for mr tappy and yeah there's a hole you see him um so I've got a repair section on down here i'll get one of those ordered but that's for another day let's get this lot done do you sell Well, that's jolly well a move in the right direction so all plug welded back into the original holes not gone too far forward yet just need to flat some of these little bastards back all gone nice and flush there look no real warpage anywhere um, measured the gap between the base of the a post the base of the b post along the line where the uh, the, 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 the weather strip goes i then cut a piece of tape that's exactly the right size um, and that's more or less what's happened there um, it's difficult to do the back, although I've only plug welded just two of the welds here. It appears to be okay, but until I hang the rear door, I'm not going to know for sure. So I'm, I'm, well, I'm hoping the customer's going to bring them up next week, actually. The, both the doors for this side. I can hang them, I can finish off the welding uh, on this side. How about that? I think so. Yes. Right, I've had enough of welding today, so I'm packing in the welding, and I'm going to go and finish my coffee. And then I might have a beer. If you fancy buying me a beer, then there's a PayPal me link scrolling across the bottom of your screen. I don't drink while I'm working, but after I finish working, I enjoy a beer. Um, mm, coffee. Um, what I'm going to say here is I'm actually going to drill these spot welds here and move this plate that way very slightly it overhangs at this end and it underhangs at that end which i think is making up the two mil difference or so of the problem i've got here um yes but that's all 
sealed back up again. A post isn't connected in any way whatsoever because I need to do work on the inside and that's really going to be a job for tomorrow or perhaps even Sunday depending on how inclement the weather is going to be because I'm led to believe it's not going to be very nice. And then once I've done this and knowing that I can do this with the axle in place, I'll put the axle back on. There's a non weldy job for me to do there. So I've got poly bushes and so forth to uh, to push them to the arms. That's not bad. Then I'm going to work out what I'm going to do with all this shambles here. I'll talk to the customer, he might just want me to replace this. You can see this has been replaced all red. No, sorry, it's been welded up there. Um, it's tired. Time to replace it. I'll have a chat with the customer. If I'm going to replace it, then obviously I can sort all this shambles out down here. So I got these uh, inner wings in primer. One thing I found, by the way, turd, pen that writes on turds, you can't prime over it, which is a bit of a ball's ache. Um, so where the pen is still showing through here, I'm going to sand that back because clearly there's no primer on that. That base there. And then I'm going to satin black the top edges um, and I'm going to um, uh, use something like a Rust Oleum product on the underside, uh, really just to protect it, and then a stone guard over the top of that. Uh, how much seam sealer I put on here, I'm not sure yet. The thing is, um, and this is the weird one, these things only ever rot out underneath the seam seal. So I'm going to try and work out what I'm going to do. Um, it's a brushable seam seal anyway, but some areas, like down here, you really want to put a seam seal down there. And, and along this edge here, you might want to do something. But do you? Do you actually let the moisture go in there and not get trapped? I don't know. $64 million question. They look a lot better in primer anyway. I'm going to go on to Vogue SE. And I've done all of the, uh, the top rails and the uh, radiator slam not slam the radiator closing pieces that also came with the kit so that's all there waiting for a top coat tomorrow and these are the froggets easy on inner wings that i've got here custom supply all sat in blacked ready to go on um a bit premature because i've still not got any further than the uh, the sill work i've done already but uh more or less can be bolted into position. I still need to drill the holes out on the driver's side, but I thought, well, I've got the paint gun out, I might as well paint it. Localised repairs can be done afterwards. But uh, yeah, inside and out look quite smart, don't they? There you go. Um, yes. Does it look any different? <laughs> it is. It's actually quite a bit of work gone into this. So first of all, the axle's back on it again. So that's all blue poly bushed up, new bolts. Um, I'm going to put the springs back in, but just haven't yet. Um, and then welded the A-post on. <clears throat> I could tidy up the welds still, but that's that's kind of where it needs to be. These are not the doors that came with this car, but these are a set of um, four-door doors that I've just hung onto the hinges and they line up with the catches. So really, the, the, you know, the main purpose of doing this was to, uh, to establish that the... Uh, the B post was in the right position, <coughs> which it is. So I've welded it on there. You can see down here, welded on. And you still need to clean all this shit back. You can't see all that shit back down there. Seat belt mounts welded to the top of the sill. Yeah, it's all moved forwards a step. I'll hang that door back on in a second. <coughs> but uh, yeah, that's been good. Right, next thing I'm going to do with this um, is I'm going to take that body mounting out, drill through the spot welds up here, down here, replace it. <clears throat> it's <clears throat> it could be a lot better and then I need to uh, sort out the drafty area in the bulkhead and put the inner wing back on and move forward a step God help us <laughs> it's fucking ridiculous isn't it I had to take the um, the drop arm off the steering I'll show you I took the drop arm off the steering <clears throat> because the gate was split and the joint is fucked. That is as notchy as you like. Now, you don't need dynamite to get these things off. What you need is a fucking great big 
clamp um, and I had the windy gun on that um, and, and against the, the, the base of the post and uh, yeah once I got some torque into it gave it a clout off it came so that worked beautifully and that chap there is actually it's, it's a proper Churchill tool as well look at that tool number 18675A no serial number warning set the two claws to the corresponding graduations and tighten both socket screws before using well basically what you do is you get it so that it sits like that no other way up Richard twat it sits like that because um, this is the steering box on this side and that's the nut on that side um, and those two platform there sit quite neatly on there um, yeah it did take a lot of effort to get it off because once there was some load onto it I just gave the arm a tap with a hammer and it came off in the end so to speak well, it's about 22 23 degrees it's a beautiful June day um, so I've been working outside most of the day I've been doing this um, so I have welded in the closing piece down here triangular steel triangular steel um, and then adjusted the rubber seal so it actually fits which it does contrary to what you just saw there um, so that's all in uh, it's all going to come apart again for painting but um, shut you bastard show me up and then I thought well I'm gonna deal with this shambles down here which is why I'm out of breath really because I've been heaving and humping and pulling and tugging um, this whole body mount situation down here so I've got the standard DDS body repair section and the idea is I'm going to weld it on the outside of this um, seam it right the way around it'll go underneath that's the gearbox cover there but obviously on these later body shells they're um, brain is not fucking working today welded in spot welded in um, I'm going to try and get the floor so it goes underneath that panel underneath the leading edge of the sill so it'll get rid of uh, one of the mud traps and then I'll butt weld it up to the training edge of the bulkhead there you go um, and obviously the body my phone sorry phone my camera just randomly turns off sometimes I might need to change the SD card in it um, so what's actually left on here now although it's a bit ragged around the edges it's largely rot free so if I can weld that piece in um, then I think we'll we'll be on to a winner is where we're gonna be um, yeah I think I try not to but uh, occasionally I have to so I'm gonna spend the rest of the day now getting this all lined up and fabricated so I know exactly how it's all gonna go together and then weld the bastards in and then apart from paint I'm putting this outer wing on and all the ancillaries back on and the brakes and the suspension we're kind of done on this side and we can get on with the other side <laughs> Fuck's sake, Richard. Yes. Right. Well, that's something I can work with. Right, so that's the panel. Largely cut the side piece off. I'm probably going to end up cutting the whole damn thing off. Um, and I might even just make this lip back up again so it looks factory. Or I might weld it on along the edge down there so that it gets rid of a mud trap. Um... I'll need to make some brackets on there, though, for the wheel arch liner mud trap. Um, but yeah, there's a fair amount of percussing you need to do on these things. The profile at this edge is good. The profile at that edge is terrible. Um, and because of that, the profile up here is terrible. So you can see I've been bashing shit around. Um, and I've got it now, so it's roughly in the right sort of place. And when I offer up the uh, body mounting, you can see it's largely going to sit flat on that edge there it will by the time I've finished it um, so now what I'm really going to do now I think um, this will need to come out again tomorrow morning uh, tidy at the edges uh, and then I'm going to weld this in tomorrow, not today tomorrow um, well that'll, that's well 
and then aside from paint kind of more or less done this side it can all go back together again these aren't the doors for this car I probably mentioned already in this video uh, these are my doors um, but I just wanted to yeah be sure that things were lining up and they are gaps yep can't get a Christmas ham in there so that's good enough um, it's almost as big as the crap pile that's come off the uh, Lincoln Green car. Yes, I need to do a bit of weighing in. But yeah, I'm quite pleased with that. I think that's a major step in the right direction, getting the footwell proper and sorted out like that. Oh, there's my coffee there. I wonder where that had gone. Um, getting that all sorted out. What I will need to do on the inside here, let's just open this door again. I'll need to put the reinforcing plate up there. Um, obviously, at the moment, the, um, the gearbox cover is just bent upwards. It's held in by one single screw down there. Look at that. That's how nicely it fits. Three clamps, one single screw. Um, and then once I've got the footwell welded in, then I can plug weld the gearbox cover back to it. Um, an inch forwards a step. I put the ABS um, ECU back in because I wanted to work out where some of these brackets go and also I've got to weld this back in. This chappy needs to go <coughs> back in. So because I've lost the measurements because they were on the old sill I'll need to measure on the other side from there to there. Uh, but it's going to be kind of parallel with these two bolts here so I'd imagine it's going to go roughly about there. And I just need to be you know, sure that the seat is going to fit on it. Yes. Car stuck to look like a car again. Footwell. Good lord. Oops. That did not close. Did that time. Right. I am going to pack up because I'm going out for a beer with my missus tonight. Tuesday. Every night's a beer night, apparently. I am pleased with that. That's that's it's it's nice when you kind of can finish the day on a high, um, and knowing that I can come in tomorrow morning and weld that bastard into place, and then get the body mounting into place, um, and then really paint. I still need to do the support underneath the floor here. You can see under here as well that the floor is fairly flush with the top of the sill. So once the floor support's gone in there, um, it's going to be good. And then the wind can go on. Oh yes. Cliff will be delighted. Yeah, no. He's been on the beach, Cliff. What have you been doing? Oh, it's no wonder he's got so much surface rust on it. You're going to go on the beach, pressure wash it off afterwards. I think while this is all apart as well, take the opportunity just to go over all these areas, clean them up. It's all sat in black under here, but before this gets any worse, um, it is worthwhile just treating the rot while it's there. 